Hello, this video is one of a series of lectures for the distance education course entitled Woody Landscape Plants, a component of the Prairie Horticulture Certificate Program. This video provides a method for organizing and making a plant key. So the question would be, why would anybody want to make a plant key? Well, unless you're a plant taxonomist who makes such keys for a living, there are a couple of good reasons why it's a good thing to make a key. One is that an exercise in making a key can actually help you and deepen your understanding of how such keys work and how they are used. A second reason is it allows you to become more familiar with those characteristics that are involved in identifying plants and how to actually use them in the identification process for various plants. Just to refresh, this is a sample of a plant key, just the top portion of it, it goes on from here, that shows the organization of a, of a dichotomous key. The critical things are again that you have two choices on the left of different uh, kinds of characteristics and that some of the characteristics that are used in plant keys are highlighted here, things like whether the leaves are deciduous, whether they're simple or compound, whether they're opposites of the arrangement of leaves. You can see that these things can all be used in a plant key. <coughs> You'll also notice that the, there's one unique number on the right hand side and two on the left side as we've discussed previously. So now if you want to make a plant key you have to determine what characteristics you're actually going to use in the key. But the first step really in making a key is to determine what plants you want to include. Do you want to include a broad range of plants such as all deciduous trees or all coniferous trees or do you want to get down to a more specific key that deals with say uh, members of, of a family like the rose family. <coughs> there is no particular uh, key that you have to make. It's uh, up to the user, up to the builder of the key what plants they want to include. The next step is to gather information then on the characteristics of each species that you want to put in your key. So you have to find this in various sources of information such as books, the internet, CD-ROMs, and or course materials. But even once you've gathered a lot of information on the characteristics of the species, you have to then determine what characteristics you want to actually include in your key. So you, want, you can't include them all and you don't need to include them all. You should include those characteristics which work best for your plants and to differentiate different species. Once you have determined this, what these characteristics are, then you can construct a table that puts all the characteristics together so that you can start looking for patterns in the characteristics for each species and amongst the species. Well, here's a sample table that you could make, <coughs> and it shows on the left-hand side six species that have been chosen randomly, but have relationships to each other to make a, uh, an example key. Uh, and then all across the top, you'll see that there are various characteristics that have been chosen. Now, in this particular uh, example, I've put them in an order that we can follow along to see if we can find patterns that can be used to differentiate the different species. So. This isn't uncommon though to use leaf characteristics such as you see here as important aspects in a key. But if you are dealing uh, with things like differentiating closely related species, sometimes taxonomists have to use much more detailed information such as things as even as detailed as the morphological characteristics of seeds. But you can and you can use other characteristics besides these. These are just examples. But these are some of the common ones that are, that are used and that I would recommend that you use when you're building your own key. <coughs> now the first thing you notice if we go from the, the left to the right is looking at leaf arrangement in this particular case. And what you'll see is that for the six of the six species, three of them actually have opposite leaves. And then al you know, alternatively, if you will, uh, the other three have alternate leaves. So we already have two groups. So that's something to think about. Now if we want to differentiate these three species, we have to keep going looking for further characteristics that differentiate these three with opposite leaves. So what we can do is the next step in looking at for patterns <coughs> is to go 
to leaf type. And what we see is that there are uh, two plants with simple leaves and one plant with a compound leaf. So now we found that there's only one plant in this whole table that has opposite compound leaves. So now we have basically differentiated it from the other ones already. So when it comes to building the key, we really don't have to go any further, as you'll see in a moment. However, you'll notice that there are two opposite simple uh, plants, meaning that we still have to go further to differentiate these plants. We still have to look at other characteristics so that we can go down in our hierarchy and we can notice that leaf shape is the next one. And what we'll we see is that if we look at red osier dogwood, it actually has ovate leaves, whereas burning bush has elliptic leaves. Now these are different, but there's quite a bit of variation even amongst leaves in the same plant. So there's a possibility there could be a little bit of ambiguity between differentiating the, these particular ones. So it might be important in this case, if you're not absolutely sure that these characteristics will differentiate 100% of the time, it's sometimes good to look at further characteristics. Now you could look at flower color, but you've got white and then and in this case you've got a small yellowish green. They're different, but they may not be very distinctive, so it might be better to go right over to things like fruit type and color. <coughs> Here in, in the case of dogwood, you've got a white fleshy fruit. In the case of euonymus or burning bush, you have a capsule that sp splits to reveal a reddish arrow. So these are quite distinctive, so they can be built into the key. Now we can look at the other pathway. So we've done opposite. Now let's look at some of the patterns when it comes to the alternate plants, with the plants with alternate leaves. We've got three of them, Spirea, Nine Bark, and Shoei Mountain Ash. Well, once again, if we, if we go and we look at the, those three and think, is there something that can differentiate those? We can look at leaf type, and we find that, again, there are two of them that are compound, in this case, and then we have one that is simple. And again, similar to the previous example, once you've got something, we only have one example of alternate simple, therefore this plant is basically identified or we, is differentiated from the rest, so we don't have to go any further when it comes to identification. So we've got enough information to identify that plant or, and build it into the key. Conversely, we have two alternate compound types, therefore we have to go further. Well, let's go to, in the case of compound leaves, other characteristics could be things like the number of leaflets. So let's go and take a look at that. And what we find is that we've got, for false spirea, approximately 13 to 23 leaflets, and for Shoei Mountain Ash, 11 to 17 leaflets. Well, you might think that's okay to use that, but it isn't. And the reason isn't is, is because this is a range. <clears throat> and if you had, say, 15 or 14 or even 16, that could occur here and that could occur here. So that's not good enough. It's still useful, perhaps, to put this in your key, but you have to go further. So we could go further and say, let's look at flower color. Well, if we look at flower color, we'll see that, unfortunately, they're both white. So that's not good enough. So then what we can do is we can go one step further and say we've got um, fruit type and fruit color. In the case of false spirea, we have these dry brown follicles. In the case of showy mountain ash, we have red, smooth, and fleshy fruit. So they're quite different. So now we have enough information with the fruit type in particular, combined to some extent with the other things. There's this ambiguity here, but there's some difference. And then we can differentiate the plants. Now just to, just to make sure it's understood, we could uh, put more information about leaflets, for example. We could put the edges of the leaflets and the shape of them and so on. So there's other kinds of characteristics that you could build into this. But in this particular example, we have enough information to uh, identify, uh, we will have enough information to be able to build into the key to be able to identify these plants. In the next video, um, we will actually look at making the key from the data itself. So we will actually make the key from the data. In this particular video, we were just looking at the characteristics and trying to organize the information.